you're so fine, you're so fine, you're blowing my mind. Hey, Miggy. And... Hello. Uh, yeah, by the way, I sometimes wear glasses. I'm not blind or anything like that. But for this one only, let's do this. It's our pocket. <sighs> by the way, this, uh, it's nothing, don't worry. I just got a bit too close to the Jordy dancer while he was uh, doing his high kicks. Uh, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. These are the player ratings with me, Emil. Nice to be back after a little bit of a break and what a nice game to come back to. 2-0 against Huddersfield Town who uh, looked like they were pretty much relegated but it looks as though we are pulling away from that back, um, that bottom few teams even. Uh, pulling away from it now. Uh, let's start off with the man who was causing a few headlines the other week. That was Martin Dubravka. Unnecessary headlines if you ask me. Uh, what a great way to bounce back. He wasn't really tested greatly in this game but when he was he dealt with whatever Huddersfield could muster. Uh, he kept a lot of the critics quiet which I'm pretty pleased about. A top response from him. Uh, nine for Dubravka in the goal. Um, Yedlin. Now I think he looked quite bright on the wing. Uh, he seemed to enjoy his game. There was a few bits, you know, where he had players running around him and he was kind of looking about, but he made some good challenges. Uh, I think he was the guy that sent the Huddersfield player flying off the pitch. Uh, but there's a few where he backed off, so a few things in there, but ultimately not too much to worry about. Huddersfield didn't really test him. Uh, a strong link-up play as well when he was heading down that wing. There were some really good passes and one-twos. Uh, eight for Yedlin. On to Shea. Um, again, like most of the defenders, didn't really have too much to do at the back. But um, some of his passes did look a bit heavy. Uh, I described him as having like a, a bit of a brick foot at times. If he if he sometimes gives it a bit too much weight, but um, you know he looks good attacking as always. Shares one of these players that likes to get into the opposition's half. Certainly did against Huddersfield, but. Um, a bit of a quiet affair for him. Uh, seven for Shea. On to Lascelles, captain in full force, I think. Uh, amid some cracking challenges. Uh, challenges that kind of get the crowd to cheer almost as much as a goal. There was one in particular in the second half when he was heading towards the Gallagher. Literally last man, he ran in. He got that ball out. That is what Lascelles is there for. He's the guy that will put his life on the line for the team. Uh, and he pushed the team forward as well, uh, as well as those last-ditch challenges. Uh, nine for Lascelles. Lejeune, uh, again, I think he was similar to Shea. He looked a bit quiet, but I did notice that... That he set off the attack for the second goal, which is pretty impressive. Uh, any defender that can start up those things is, is useful, and we've seen this from Lejeune more and more since he's come back. He's vital in that team. Um, he had a bit of a quiet one, like I say, with no real game savers, but uh, he was part of a very powerful back three, which I think it's a it's it's great to have at Newcastle. We've not seen this in ages. Eight for Lejeune. Uh, Richie at the back, um, obviously playing that wing-back role, still looking okay in it. Straight-up classic game from him. Passionate like it was a cup final, but what more do you want from a player? Uh, his corners, when they weren't short, worked pretty well. Um, and, you know, it, it was pretty silly of him to get the yellow. I think that was maybe a bit of an unnecessary foul that he made there. Um, and, you know, it goes along with his passion, but maybe doesn't need to be as unhappy when he comes off the pitch. Uh, obviously replaced by Atsu, who I think looked all right, but um, didn't really have a lot of time to do much in the game. Obviously lost his place to Almiron, who we'll get on to later. But, um, yeah, Atsu will be a good impact player from the bench and uh, obviously adds to the depth of the squad. Um Going back to Richie, sorry, eight for him. Atsu, like I say, quiet game, but we'll give him a seven. I think he looked all right. Um, Longstaff, uh, protect him at all costs. No matter if you see him out on the streets, as long as you recognise him, unlike uh, the Always Man of Faces podcast member, Decker, if he's watching the wrestling or whatever sport he's watching. Uh, Super Bowl, that was what it was, American things. Um, yeah. Going back to Longstaff, he put the ball into Rondon, um, who was unlucky not to get a goal, but Longstaff was doing some great one-twos once again. Um, I think he just looks for the part, doesn't he? Um, he's a real special thing that we need to look on, uh, need to hold on to and um, look after. And you know, he won the ball back constantly. There was ones where he literally stood up the players from Huddersfield, got the ball, and kept going. And he was doing some lovely work on the wing. Um, and there was a nice long-range effort that we saw. Uh, I think that was the point where everyone was just up for a goal, but Longstaff really put that ball in, hit the post, but he's got a few of those thunder bastards in him. 
So, uh, yeah, um, great game from Longstaff. I think he's fully deserving of a 10 this week. I don't think many will disagree. Hayden, he helped with the first goal. I know he didn't really do much to assist. It was more of a, a miss kick and then a, just a, a shuffle along to Rondon. But um, he was a nuisance to the Huddersfield defence. He was flying in with challenges and it led to attacks. Uh, and each week we see an improvement from this guy. Uh, Isaac Hayden is keeping his place for that reason. And... You know, um, no matter what happens at the end of the season, I think it's good for him to have this because maybe it'll change his mind. Uh, the other thing to obviously know is that we've got some depth in those places. We've got Key back who was on the bench, didn't get a game, but still, um, competition in the central midfield is almost getting as as crowded as the centre-back role. So there's going to be some choices in the summer, I reckon, of who's going to stay, who's going to maybe uh, be the starting lineup as we go into these final few games. But um, it, it's all very exciting, got to admit. Eight for Hayden. On to the man who made his debut, uh, Almiron. Um, great to see him on the pitch, first of all. The the, uh, the display on the flags, it was it was very exciting. And I think it was quite noticeable, uh, or at least it was, it was nice to see that we're not making a massive deal of Almiron as a new signing. Now, what I mean by that is no big unveilings like your Shearers, like your Owens. The pressure's almost off him because every fan's just like, you know what, we've forked out for him. It's about time we had a player for that amount of money. Let's just see what he can do. And um, boy, did he show us. It was a bloody great game from him. You cannot ask for more on a home debut. Uh, and what a game he had. You know, uh, that first half run that I think everyone's been talking about. I think there's a few erections in the Gallagher and everywhere else. Uh, maybe just me. Uh, but yeah, did you see it? It was unbelievable. What a run and that goal should have gone in but never mind it hit the post it wasn't to be and he never stopped trying from there he was creating chances he was passing balls into Rondon I actually think he took a little bit of the workload away from Perez who we'll get on to and had a, he had a better game Perez so um, you know Almiron frustrated the, the defence and we said that what's he going to be like we said, like, what's he going to be like against these physical sides Huddersfield obviously uh, well from what we saw a rugby league team but um that physical presence didn't really stop him. He was able to get around them. And yes, it's Huddersfield who are bottom of the league. So obviously there'll be more tests to come when we see more from Almiron. But um, yeah, I think obviously he frustrated the opposition. Like I say, he got the player sent off. I know it was a pretty nasty challenge, but um, he's tougher than he looks, even though he's quite a slight player. So uh, you know what? Great debut from him. Uh, nine for him, Almiron. Uh, Perez. Oh, before I go any further, yeah, Kennedy obviously came on for Almiron, but didn't actually play that long. But um, fair play to Kennedy. He had a right rocket at the goalkeeper, who did have a good game for Huddersfield. I think he's the only reason why we didn't score more, apart from the post uh, hits. But um, yeah, Kennedy in the team, few South Americans around him. Bit of a, a good vibe as we had this time last year. Maybe we'll get a bit more out of him as the weeks go by. Um, you know what? I think it's a, as as you can hear from me in this video, it's it's a good, exciting time to be a Newcastle fan. I would say, yeah, it's not ideal where we're, where we are on the table, but it could only get better now. And the position we're in, let's just yeah, I'm rambling because it's exciting. Um, going on to Perez uh, now, I think he linked up really nicely with Almiron. Like I said, it could be promising that partnership behind Rondon, uh, and and he was focused on his role. Like I mentioned about Almiron taking some of the workload off Perez. Almiron was kind of doing the, the creative, the running around. Perez was able to just to sit in his little area uh, and, and really frustrate Huddersfield, which I think was kind of the the theme of the game. Um, he was looking for goals. He had a few shots, and there was one in the first half where he was pretty unlucky just to. to to skied over the keeper. It was a bit of a tough angle, you could say, um, as were a lot of the chances that we had. It was never like a straight, clear cut on goal, apart from the actual goals themselves. They were all kind of coming in from different angles. Um, but yeah, goal was very well taken from Perez, thumped it in, uh, job done, simple as that. Perez. Uh, and he hammered the team. Yeah, I think it was very good. Nine for Perez, on to Rondon. All game long, he wanted goals. Uh, he was unlucky not to score a few more, uh, hit the post, he, he missed a header, uh, it was just one of those ones where it wasn't going to go in, we thought, uh, and his hold up play was excellent as always, but the goal that he took, it was just a classic striker goal, you know, uh, not exactly too much technical thinking to do, he just had to say, right, there's the net, get it through his legs, see you later, um, and that's what you want from the big man. Nine for Rondon as well, I think that it was a good game. But let's not get carried away. It was Huddersfield at the end of the day, um, who are a tough opposition, but it was also 10 men. Uh, and, you know, in another game where those chances didn't go in, 
uh, we might be sitting and thinking, oh, okay, right, what's going to happen? Obviously, we've got a nice little test against Burnsley. Uh, Burnsley? Burnsley? No. Um, Burnley on Tuesday night. And, uh, yeah, all of a lie down. I need one. It was a hell of a weekend. Welcome to Miguel Almiron. And um, I didn't understand what the chant was in the Gallagher. The only one I heard was, na 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 Miggy Almiron, uh, and then there was another one in the War Hiem, or whatever it's called now, uh, didn't have a clue, so um, I've made my own. Oh Miggy, you're so fine, you're so fine, you're blowing my mind, hey Miggy, and uh, with that, good night. <laughs>